Hi, my sweet lifers. It's Lisa Marie here. Hope you guys have had a beautiful week. We've had a lot going on over here. We've had some really beautiful weather, which is unusual. We have only a slither of time in Texas so we can have pretty weather where it's like 70 degrees and we don't have any humidity and beautiful time to plant in the garden. And the garden tour is coming up the end of this week for those of you that are following that on the playlist. So we're going to be doing our sweet scoop because it's Tuesday again. I'm going to pick up kind of where I left off with some revelation stuff as that's what we're doing in school right now. We're in the final week, which has been a lot. Obviously, graduate school is a lot. Um, but I wanted to kind of backtrack a little bit from last week. We talked about the beginning of the book. We talked about how John is writing letters to the seven churches and how Jesus is portrayed in each of those letters specifically to each of those churches to try to let them know what they are doing right and what they're doing wrong to kind of give them a chance to fix that and correct that. But inside of all of that, there's also in the book four visions. And in the visions, there's that's where everybody gets a little bit sidetracked because there's this huge misconception where people want to try to assign specific people to specific events that are written in the book or attach it to people who are in our time and it's really you need you really need to look at the book as a message for all of humanity and it actually goes back to genesis and there's so many places in it that's back to that there's so many there's so many uh scriptures that are in Revelation that harken back to the beginning of the world being created and the Garden of Eden and how everything becomes new again in the in the new cre creation of the new heavens and the new earth. And it is, I know it's easy to get sidetracked, but I have spent, I'm going to show you, I have spent the past week, I told you I was going to be doing it, um, studying it, and, and this is my notebook. Last week I think I had maybe this much done. Um, and, and I have written almost to the very end of this book. I mean, it is a lot of notes, guys, a lot of notes, um, and really too much for me to do in one sitting. I think what I'd like to do is actually sit down and tape a series on Revelation where we go through each of the scriptures line by line and, and try to go through them together so that you can see how you can use that to help you with your own life and how you can understand this book, which is really confusing and can be really confusing a whole lot better. But what I will say is this particular book, and I'm not getting, I don't get any endorsements off this, but I want to share this with you as well as with my school. Um, this book by Scott McKnight um, with Cody Machette, it's Revelation for the Rest of Us, and it's a prophetic call to follow Jesus as a dissident disciple. It's one of the books that I'm going to be using in my paper this week. And I love how they have put together a breakdown of Revelation in a way that is easy to understand and also important because when John wrote this to the seven churches, it was actually an oral uh, piece that was actually presented to the people that were at church. So it's almost like a William Shakespeare play, which I think I may have mentioned that as well last week. So the, the people who in his audience were actually understanding what was going on because whenever he says Babylon, they understood that he was talking about Rome. He's kind of like secret coded it because he'd already been exiled and we talked about that as well. And so when he was sending this message, he was letting them know that he wanted to kind of direct them and help them and guide them into what their relationships needed to be both with the secular world and Roman Empire as well as with in their own congregations in their churches. And so there's visions of things that are in there that are actually part of uh, something that they would get. And it's hard for us, you know, looking back at it and reading it to understand, well, what is this beast with seven heads and all these horns? And what is this lamb once a lion, all of a sudden it's a lamb? I mean, that's not too hard for us Christians to get, but it's a lot of things that are there that are symbolic of things that have happened in the Old Testament and symbolic of what was going on right then and there during their time period, but it's very applicable as well for us today. So the overall themes that have come from me really studying Revelation is that we are to remain faithful and steadfast in our, our scripture study, to ask the Holy Spirit constantly to guide us and help us 
walk and see and discern what is not real, um, what has been a deception from Satan, because he's real sneaky like that, which we've talked about before. And also to understand a couple of things about us as Christians, because we've been saved, right? And we have been given eternal life by Jesus by having died on the cross. But what's really cool about that is, is that we have been made a part of the royal priesthood. And as we worship God now, we are actually ministering to him. And um, these ideas are not my own. These ideas have come to me through my school. And we use Third Mill um, Ministries. And I really encourage all of you to go on YouTube. It's an opportunity for you to read and listen to um, the word and understand it a whole lot better. There's three different videos for Third Mill on Revelation, and I recommend you buy, you go, you don't have to buy it, it's free. I recommend you go and watch all three and, and spend some serious time on that because it has really helped me break down the actual details of what the book means. But the most important part about it, which I think is really where we need to be with Revelations as a whole, is that it's not a scary book at all. It's actually a really wonderful book. It's a beautiful love story of God's love for us. And it's a full circle of what he was trying to do and did in the very beginning. And then it got disrupted with his, his fallen angel. And so it's like a final, I'm putting my foot down, I'm done with all this nonsense. And where we're at in this time that we're in right now, in what we call the eschatology, is that, which is basically we're in the end times before Christ comes back, is that God's gathering his people, right? He's giving everybody an opportunity to minister to those who are out there in the world that don't know who he is. But he's also giving those of us as Christians to really strengthen our faith and trust and, and perseverance in what we do and, and how we communicate with him. And it's a really cool book. It really is a cool book. I've had so many people say, oh, they've rolled their eyes at me. Oh my gosh, you're, you're studying that. Oh, it's awful. I've never read it or I don't want to read it. I'm afraid to read it. And I have to tell you, it's really cool. I mean, it really brings home there is nothing to fear at all in in the end of the world. And the end of the world is not even really the end of the world. It's actually a re completely rebirthing of what was intended in the very first place. In the new heavens and the new earth, there's the tree of life that flows directly from the throne of God in the new Jerusalem. Um, it feeds and ministers all living creatures. We're not going to have, we're not going to have the bodies we have right now because that was the thing I had asked my priest. I was like, well, gosh, you know, Adam and Eve would have lived forever if they hadn't eaten that apple. Um, but how does that work? Like, how does the body break down? And does the body ever break down? And how do, how do children grow up? And are we always going to be children? Are those children going to stay children? How does all this work? It can be really confusing. And I think that what I've come away with thus far, and again, I'm not anywhere near done studying them. I might be done with this class, but that doesn't mean I'm done with Revelation, um, is that we will be brought back in a body similar to Jesus's resurrection. Um, you know, as you guys know, whenever he was resurrected, he came back and walked around and, you know, the apostle Timothy was, I mean, Thomas was like, I don't believe any of this has happened until I can put my hands in, in your holes in your, and put my hand in your side. And he could touch him, he could see him, he could he could hear him. And so I think that our bodies will be in a, a different state. Uh, uh, biologically speaking, it may not, it won't be the same exactly because we will be living forever. But it's cool because somebody said the other day, they were like, oh, well, heaven is just going to be so boring. I mean, like, what are we going to do? And, and they're like, I don't understand. We're going to just stand around and worship God or we're going to sit on a cloud all day. I mean, what is it going to be like? And I was like, well, based on what I've been studying, the earth is going to remain very similar to what it is right now. But what's going to happen is there won't be any evil and things are not going to be after each other like they were before. In other words, if you walked through the forest and you saw a lion or a, a, a big wild cat or something or a bear, you're not going to be attacked by that bear viciously and violently because there's not that kill it, kill it, kill it going on in the whole of the creation. Everything is going to be very peaceful like it was in the Garden of Eden before Satan entered in. So it's going to be a really cool place to be. And it's my understanding that you're going to be reuniting, reuniting with your spouses. 
that you're going to have things to do that you could, you know, like Adam and Eve were charged with being tending, tending to the garden and being um, the ones that were stewards of the, the animals and, and the earth. And so, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I spend a lot of time in my garden here on this earth and I wouldn't mind spending a whole lot of time, if not forever, playing around in my garden in the new heavens and the new, the new, the new earth and the new heavens. And so I think that it's something that people don't want to talk about because they're scared because they don't know what it is. But I just really want to encourage you to read this book because it's really been an interesting change of perspective for me on what it will be like when we're gone. And the other thing is, is that it really does take the scare factor away from actually dying in this body. Because this body is the one that gets all the diseases and wears down and breaks down. And if you've ever sat in a chair for too long and tried to get up and you're in your 50s like me, you realize there's a lot of creaking going on and you're just having to, it's like the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz, having to oil, <laughs> oil your joints just to be able to get going again, slow moving. And to be able to run and play and jump and, and be free of all of those things that happen when we get older is really cool too, you know. Um, so I just think that it's really important. I want to express to you what I've gained from it is really a new understanding of what it's going to be like when we're not in this body anymore. And the other thing that's really important to understand is how much God loves us because he's given us a son and then he's had him go down into hell and bring up with him the saints that were uh, martyred before he arrived on earth. And then he's provided each one of us that believe in him an everlasting life and to be a part of his reign as priests and kings in the new heavens and the new earth. So it's pretty cool. It's like not something that I didn't look at it that way before. I had not really had a more concrete vision of what it was like to be in heaven. Um, and I really feel very, very confident that this is really going to be a new rebirth of our earth. Um, and that it won't be somewhere far off in the sky that we don't understand and we don't know but it actually comes back full circle to what it was that God had intended in the first place. You know, the Garden of Eden was a beautiful place and the new kingdom is going to be a beautiful place as well with waterfalls and food and animals and our children and our parents and our grandparents and all these friends and family members that have passed on before us. We'll be able to communicate with them again and be with them and be with Jesus and it just sounds actually very wonderful, honestly. Um, I still have lots of work here to do on earth. I'm not lured to want to go anytime before God wants to take me. But my goodness, it is not something to be afraid of. Those ideas of, and I've heard so many sermons of, you know, fire and brimstone and lakes of fire and all this stuff. And yeah, you have a lot to be afraid of if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, you really do. And we talked about that in class. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. It's one of the reasons why we're called as Christians to minister to those that are not. Because for the unbelievers, what is pointed out in that last book of the Bible is not a pretty scene. It's pretty scary for them. But for those of us that believe in Jesus Christ, we've, we're getting ready to inherit a kingdom where we've got access to all of the people that we loved and love and never have to worry about Satan involving himself or his angels and all that ever again. And all of the things that have happened in the world that have led up to what will happen when we do have the end of the world is a lot of things that are not even stuff that we have any control over. I and mean, we have to understand that there's a spiritual warfare here that's a hierarchy of beings. And God has basically said, you know, I'm going to, he hasn't said it, but he said it, right? He said it in a, a very subtle way through his, his Holy Spirit coming through and inspiring these works through the apostles to explain to us very carefully sometimes more subtly than others more in your face than others too that he's not going to just sit back and let things go crazy forever and ever i mean there will be an opportunity at some point for you know this to be it this is it and when jesus comes that's what's going to happen and it's our our job while we're here as christians to be compassionate for those that don't believe to try to share with them what we believe, to try to help them understand that 
we're not coming at them in a way that's like, well, we have a better religion than you or we have a better whatever. No, not at all. It's really important for us to minister to people to let them know that God is a good God. God loves you. God made you in his own image. We should love each other, love each other and help each other and strive to help each other that are in need here while we're here um, and not be haughty and not be mightily acting like we're all that. Uh, but very responsible to one another as human beings, even if we don't agree on every single thing that there is to argue about. And I'm sure that if you sat in a room with somebody that you're even super duper close to, at some point in a conversation, there would be one or two subjects that you didn't quite see eye to eye on. You didn't quite see it was absolutely the same way. But that doesn't mean that we are not united together. It just means that you're not specifically on that point or another point perfectly aligned with exactly the same mindset and that, that's okay i mean god made us all different he did not make us all to be thinking the same thing like little robots we are part of the world and we are part of community and we have been given free will and we've been given a brain and an opportunity to read and think and learn and imagine and all of those things and so i think that sometimes we get caught up in those little details of stuff and that's where satan wiggles in because just because I believe that, you know, the summertime and the springtime are the best times of the year and somebody else believes that the wintertime and the fall are the best times of the year does not necessarily mean that either one of us are right. It just means that we each have our own opinion about the best times of the year. Um, but there's just this one point that we really have to bring home to people that don't believe in Jesus Christ is that he is on, he's the, that's it. It's the only way to get there. I mean, it really is the only way to get there. So if you if you can, I mean, as a Christian, and you know this is a Christian channel, if you know somebody who's a little bit not sure and, you know, really needs to be given a little bit of extra love to help them figure it out, I really recommend that they read the book of Revelation. I really recommend they really watch Third Mill Ministries on YouTube because it is, it is a fully fleshed out, in-depth video series on this book and what it means, what it actually means at the end of the world, that it's really not the end of the world. And the reality is, is that God has given us every single opportunity all along the way through all of his creation to repent and to come to him first whenever it was with the Old Testament, now with Jesus Christ. And Jesus is coming back. And when he gets here, it's it's going to be beautiful for those of us that believe because he has promised so much wonderful things for us in the new kingdom. And it is going to be a kingdom that is exactly what all of us want. I can't even imagine anyone from any walk of faith that would not want to be in the way that the kingdom is described in our inheritance in the kingdom of God at the new creations and the new heavens and the new earth. I cannot imagine why or how anyone would not want that for themselves. I mean, even if they didn't believe in Jesus and God before you started talking to them, if you can explain to them or guide them to a place that can help them understand what it actually is, it really is groovy because it's, it's not something anybody wants to say no to. I mean, I guess if you're really into, you know, wealth and 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 fame and and deception and playing around with other people's spouses and doing sinful behaviors and power and greed and you're just digging that all day long uh then you know that's not going to be something you're going to want to do because it's not going to be aligned with your beliefs but that's the line with the beliefs of of satan and the dragon and it's going to be an end that's not going to be cool and that's the day that we're all looking forward to, honestly, as Christians, because all throughout human humanity and humankind, there's been all sorts of bad stuff that have happened. You know, all sorts of bad stuff that has happened with the Egyptians, oppression. You know, we've had Hitler. We've had annihilations of people. We've had cruel things done to children. We've had all these bad things done. And another thing that's talked about is that the angels and the demons are assigned to different nations. So when you think about that, that's where a lot of people get a little bit off the sidetrack and over down into a different path trying to figure out who those nations are. 
And when we see things bad happening in our time, in our day, it's easy to assign it to Satan or assign it to God. But everybody knows what's right and everybody knows what's wrong. I mean, you know what's right and you know what's wrong. There's a lot of things that are tricky and the Holy Spirit is here to kind of guide us in that direction, share with us, give us what we need to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong and what looks shiny but isn't shiny. Because that's the other thing. A lot of things that are shiny aren't shiny. They're, they're not shiny. They're made up to be shiny so that it can trick you. And we have to be really diligent in our faith to figure out what those things are. And that's definitely being in the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, all day long, asking for guidance, asking for discernment. But there's a lot that's just black and white. I mean, it, it, there's a lot that's black and white. There's a lot of things that we see in the world that we know, you know in your gut. I don't care what religion and what faith you're in. It is dead on wrong. And it is those things where I feel like it's safe to say that that's been assigned by a demon or being controlled by a demon. Um, but we have to we have to understand what it is, is our role here. I mean, we have one role, and that is to serve God. And we have one role in the kingdom, which is to be the stewards of the earth and to take care of the creation that God has given us. And we get to be the coolest things ever. You know, like we get to be... We get to be what God intended us to be when the new world comes. We get to be that at the consummation. We get to be every bit of what God had planned from the very beginning. And that's a beautiful love story. And guys, that's an absolutely gorgeous ending to a situation that has turned so crazy for God. I mean, I talked earlier about how he had this, you know, angel that he had created. And it's like a bad son. That has just wrecked havoc for a long time. But because he's got all these people on earth and he really wants all of us to gather and be together and connected and to worship him and to respect his work and to be in obedience to his word. He's given us a lot of time. He's been real patient with us. And even at the end, even in Revelation, he's patient. He actually gives people opportunities to come to him even at the very last hour of the very last second before they're casted into the lake of fire. I mean, he it's like he wants every single person to be saved. He really does, which is just a tremendous love story for me in acknowledging what he has done, what he wants for us, and how cool uh, it's going to be when we're all united together. I mean, I was telling my son the other day, or actually this morning when we were talking about it again before taping, that you know, I don't know if many of you guys, I don't know if I've shared this with many of you guys. I know I've not shared any of it with you guys on the channel, but Brian and I had two miscarriages. We had a miscarriage before we had our daughter, and then we had a miscarriage before we had our son. And I kind of justified the miscarriage before our daughter because we were not planning to be pregnant, and we didn't know we were pregnant, and we didn't really know how to react to that because I was in the middle of school, and, and I was not thinking about being pregnant or being a mommy at that point yet. But when we were pregnant with that that third baby, we were we were planning on being pregnant with that baby. We were planning on being pregnant and having that baby. And I remember going to the hospital and seeing the doctor and um being told that the baby had died and I had to go in and and I was really I want to say my response to everything has always been very much like John persevere, 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 have faith, persevere. A lot of people will say that to me when they meet me or they know me. They'll say, all these things happen to you and you just roll, water rolls off your shoulders. You just keep on a trucking because, you know, you've got this strong faith and you don't stop and spend, you know, years and wallowing around in grief and sorrow. You just get back up on the horse and keep going through life again and don't look back. And that's really true, honestly, about me. But it, it dawned on me when I was working on this Revelations stuff, Revelation stuff for school, and especially at the very end when we were talking about the, the creation of the new kingdom and the new earth, is that I'm going to get to see those children. I'm going to get to see those children. And despite the fact that I know, and, and for those of you that know me, personally know me, we would never have had James Edward if that baby had lived. Like, he would never have gotten here because I would have been coming off that pregnancy when he was conceived. So I believe in all things happening for a reason. I believe that. I believe that's 
about my mother getting killed. I believe that about my husband and I being married. I believe that about everything that happens. It happens for a reason. Everybody that comes into my life comes for a reason. Anyone that crosses my path is supposed to cross my path for a reason. But I really, it just struck me. I was like, wow, I hadn't thought about those babies for a while. Like, I, And I don't dwell on that. I have family members that have lost children and they do. And I have mothers in the client base that I photograph their other children and they do. And some even celebrate their birthdays and, uh, you know, they have a birthday in heaven the day that they died. And, you know, maybe they died at the hospital two or three hours later. I don't know. Some of them did and some of them lived a few years. But they have a serious mourning of that baby not being on earth with them. And for me, it's just been over here. But it really was like a ding dong, like a little light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get to meet those children that I never got to see. And how cool is that going to be? I mean, that's going to be pretty stinking cool. Um, and so I said something to Jamesy about it. I said, well, you know, when we're in heaven, you're going to get to meet the brothers or sisters or sister and brother because we don't know what they were because they died really early in the pregnancy. But we're going to get to meet those guys. And that's going to be pretty cool. Like, I mean, I really think that's going to be neat. So I don't know. That's what I came away with, which is obviously a positive note on Revelation. Um and I really, 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 really want you to read it. I mean, it's one of those books that so few people preach on because it's a hard one. It's so way, it's so easy to get off down the bit wrong path and figure out what those things might have meant and what they mean right now. And it, it, it can be very confusing. But the bottom line is, is that everything's going to be okay, right? Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be just fine. We are all going to be united. We're all going to be with Christ. We're going to reign as his royal priesthood. We're going to be able to have a place where there's no sin, suffering, sorrow, death, anything ever again. And that's a place that I'd love to be. So that's where I'm at with Revelation. The other thing I wanted to share with you this week is that we have had two miracles, solid miracles that have occurred within my family, my tribe. One of which is one of our babies needed to get a transplant. And he was put on the transplant list. And prayer warriors that we are, we all prayed for that to happen. It had to be a perfect match because of some complications. And he went into heart surgery last night. And I got a text at 4.30 this morning that the rhythm has been found in the heart. And that he was coming out of surgery. We're going to close him up. So that's a prayer that's answered. The other thing is I have a little girl that I photographed since she was itsy bitsy teensy teensy itsy and she was in a horrible car accident in Houston, Texas this past week and her, the mother that was driving the car died. Um, her two children were very severely injured and she had to go under, undergo surgery as well. She's in her senior year and so we're all praying for her to get well and for those children when they wake up from their recoveries and comas and whatnot. I'm not sure exactly where they are with their critical care because they're pretty, 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 pretty messed up uh, when they discover that their mother's not with them anymore on earth, that they'll be able to be able to get through that, you know, because it's a tough thing to have to go through, especially as a kiddo. So anyway, well, I wanted to share that with you this week. That's been my sweet scoop and I'm going to be working on the garden next week. I'm going to have a week off from school, which is yay. I've gotten a couple different types of basil that I'm going to be working with. One that's really, really pungent, which I'm excited about making some pesto with. And I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff going on with the Sweet Lifer magazine coming out. So for those of you guys that have not subscribed to the Sweet Lifer magazine, it comes in your email. And it's coming about once every quarter these this time because I'm in seminary. It's too hard to put it together otherwise. But I did do a really cool photo shoot this week earlier with a bunch of strawberries for the cover so I've, little by little I'm getting things done for it uh, just because it's taken a lot of time to do all this stuff with Revelation and with First Peter, Second Peter, 1, 2, 3, John and Hebrews so it's been a lot but um, I have to tell you it's been wonderful that I've, I've really enjoyed it I'm still enjoying seminary so much and if you get a chance to do it I want you to try to do it because it is a lot of information that you'll never get in just going to church on Sunday and you'll find that it is a blessing uh, you'll also find that it is a little bit of a uh, interesting situation I will say with Satan because Satan is not particularly thrilled with us whenever we get digging deep into the Bible it's like uh, my friend Dr. Tony Evans who's a preacher up in Dallas I watch him all the time 
He says, Satan doesn't care if you go to church on Sunday as long as you're not with him all throughout the week. And that's for sure the truth. Because uh, I can see that there's a lot of, sometimes I'll get distracted and sometimes I'll get off my thought process because I'm being influenced with something that's trying to detract me from what I'm doing, which is to study the word of the Lord. So anyway, well, with all that being said, I hope you guys have a sweet week. Hope you guys will spend some time doing what I asked you to do and give me your feedback as well, because I've been getting lots of feedback. The channel is at a hundred thousand views. Can you believe it? And we've gained 178 new subscribers in the last two weeks, which is just awesome. It's awesome. I cannot tell you how grateful I am for those of you guys that are watching and sharing it and letting your friends and family know about the, the Living the Sweet Life channel with me because there's so many cool things that I want to talk to you about and share with you. And the garden tour is on Friday. So I'll be seeing you guys out there in the garden. The radishes are ready. The beets are ready. There's also the artichokes are gorgeous. And I can't wait to see you there. So you guys take care and stay sweet. We'll see you next week.